Autism can present itself socially, but females are naturally more social creatures. And so we learn how to abide by the rules in our social environment and we can camouflage or mask. And honestly, that's part of the reason that females are so underdiagnosed. To mask or camouflage is to cover up how you would normally interact with someone else by taking on different characteristics that you notice other people are doing. So for example, in situations where I'm talking to somebody that I'm not super familiar with, I don't like making eye contact. I can't actually hear the words that are being said when I make eye contact with someone. So I find different places on the face to focus that's not the eyes but it still looks like i'm making eye contact so i'm masking my desire to just be like looking off in the distance while i'm talking to someone which actually helps me listen to you and i'm trying to appear more socially normal by pretending like i'm making eye contact that's an example of masking or camouflaging what i want to do today i recreated a chart that I found when I was in the process of my, getting my diagnosis that really opened my eyes to how autism can present differently in females. I think that this chart originally came from Rudy Simone in one of their books, and I'll have to, I'll put a link to that in the description. This was originally posted on helpforaspergers.com, which is no longer an active site, but I love this chart. The only copy that I can find online is blurry and hard to read, and so I've reformatted it and um, made it colorful and shortened the descriptions a little bit so that it all fits in one kind of easy to digest page, and that's what I'm gonna be reading off of today. But this did not originally come from me. It came from, I believe, Rudy Simone, and I'm just going to kind of add my tidbits to it as I walk you through it today. All right, so we're gonna start over here under appearance and personal habits. So first of all, you might notice if you're an autistic female that you prefer to dress more comfortably. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't wear heels and that type of thing, but you might just naturally gravitate towards t-shirts or comfortable jeans or sensible shoes. You might spend less time on grooming and upkeep. I hate caring for my hair. Like I remember in college, one of my roommates was like, why are you brushing your hair like that? Like, I just didn't know. You might have an eccentric personality in or appearance. You might come across as young for your age and your preferences, your appearances, and your taste. I'm 32 and people still call me like sweetie, sugar, honey. I hate it, but I think I just come across as younger in a lot of ways. Autistic females are usually more expressive than autistic males, so that's one way that it appears that we might not be autistic to the outside world. It's like, oh, you're so expressive and social. But again, that can be part of the cam camouflaging and masking that I was talking about earlier. You might also have androgynous tastes, um, but a feminine appearance. You might camouflage socially, and you may lack a sense of personal identity. So for me, I realized whenever I would take personality tests and stuff, because I love taking those, it would always be kind of based, be based off of maybe like the people I had been around most recently or the latest movie I had seen or TV show, because I just had a hard time pinpointing who I exactly was. And I still do because I naturally just kind of take on other people's characteristics so that I can camouflage. You might retreat into reading and or TV and movies. You might manage your stress with rules, discipline, and routines. That is me. And you're probably happiest at home or other controlled environments. My happy place is on my couch or in my bed under my weighted blanket and give me my cats. Okay, let's hop over to intellect, education, and vocation. You might have been considered gifted, shy, or sensitive when young. My psychologist says let's replace sensitive with responsive. You might have overt or covert learning deficits. I wrote co covert on there. That was for me because I feel like I have plenty of learning deficits, but my teachers were never aware of them because I hid them really well. Often musical or artistic. I am a professional flute player and I love playing the piano and as a hobby I collect all of the instruments. I have a purple saxophone, a djembe, an ocarina, a guitar, I have a ukulele, I have a piccolo. Yeah, I don't know what system of counting I'm using on my hands, but I have a lot of instruments. You may have a savant skill or another strong talent. You may gravitate towards computers and technology or writing languages and psychology. I feel like I could give myself a degree in psychology because I studied so much of it just out of compulsion. You also might have many self-taught skills. You may be highly educated, but struggle with social aspects of school. I always had so much anxiety in college about I wouldn't join a sorority or a fraternity because I just did not understand. I didn't understand it. You might have a partial degree or two. You can be really passionate about one course of study and then change your mind and do something else completely and be really passionate about that. That element of myself drives me crazy. You may have trouble staying employed or finding work. 
I have had so many different jobs over the years. I've been a cupcake baker. I opened my own bakery in my house. I've teacher. I've been a substitute teacher. I've been a fitness instructor. <laughs> A lot of things. So you might be slow to comprehend some things due to sensory and cognitive issues. That may or may not be apparent to other people. But like for me, in conversations, if somebody tells a joke, I feel that I might be one of the last people to actually understand that joke. But I'll go ahead and laugh just to make it look like I'm part of the conversation. And you might prefer written rather than verbal instructions. Whenever teachers would tell me to remember something, like in college, I wrote every, I typed every single word on my computer. I needed everything in writing. You might have obsessions that are less obvious than um, males who have autism spectrum disorder. Special interest is a pretty significant characteristic for autistic people in general. And women might be more able to camouflage that and make it appear less intense. Like you're not gonna be in a room full of trains all day, every day. And I know that's a little bit stereotypical. Okay, let's go to emotional and physical. You might be emotionally immature or sensitive. For me, I'm very sensitive or responsive. You might have frequent anxiety and or fear. That's me. So much anxiety, especially in grade school and high school and college and adulthood and parenthood. You might be more open to discussing feelings than ASD males. You might have strong sensory issues or be prone to overwhelm. I'm really picky about what I eat because I don't like the textures of certain foods. I get overwhelmed by really soft touch. I hate it and it makes me really mad. You might be prone to depression or you may have been diagnosed as bipolar or manic depressive instead of um, labeling it as autism. So if you had other diagnoses, like for me in the past, I was diagnosed OCD and ADHD. I still think the ADHD is really fitting, but I think the OCD was more ASD in general. So you might have had other diagnoses that don't really seem to fit. You might be super sensitive to medication and anything you put in or on your body. That's me. And my psychologist has said that oftentimes autistic people can have paradoxical effects with medication. So if something is supposed to work one way, it might work the complete opposite way for you. So weird. Another thing that nine out of 10 autistic people, I saw that statistic somewhere. I'll have to find that and dig that up. Nine out of 10 people have some type of gastrointestinal issue. Like stomach issues when you eat certain foods, indigestion, acid reflux, that kind of stuff. You might stem to soothe when you're, when you're agitated. A lot of people, you know, think of autism as kind of like hand flapping. But for me, stemming is like, I constantly move my fingers and tap on things, which I kind of got away with because I was a band nerd. I also click my teeth. I just go back and forth with my teeth in my mouth. Nobody else knows I'm doing it, but I do it constantly. And then when I was in grade school, I blinked just all the time. You might be prone to temper tantrums or crying meltdowns in public. It's not necessarily because you're being dramatic. It's just because you're overwhelmed by all of the sensory information that you're processing. You also might be very physical when you're happy. I love dancing. I dance all the time. My mother-in-law got me a sign for the kitchen that says, in this kitchen, we dance. You might hate injustice and being misunderstood. It can often incite anger in you. I know like we should all hate injustice, but there's just a certain element of it, especially for autistic people, I think, because we're so used to being misunderstood that it just enrages us. Okay, you can also be prone to mutism when stressed. Mutism means you shut down and you don't talk. And you may have a unique vocal quality or you might speak in monotone. So it might be hard to believe right now, but a lot of times when I'm processing things, I'm just very monotone and I talk like this and I don't have much facial expression. And for a while, I've been married for almost 11 years now, but for a while that was kind of an issue in our marriage because my husband was like, I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what you're feeling. You seem like you're very put off or removed from the situation. I'll be like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you said and I care about this very deeply. Or I can also be really expressive. Okay, so the last column, social and relationships, like I said, your words and your actions might often be misunderstood. We, we tend to have like our own mental landscape that is just so different from what other people experience and actually communicating our experiences can be very difficult. You might be perceived to be cold-natured or self-centered. Again, kind of in my marriage, I seem cold and removed sometimes because my brain is way out there and I'm processing everything while somebody's trying to talk to me and that can seem like I'm being cold when really I'm just trying to stay up to speed in the conversation. You might be shy or mute. I was unbelievably shy all throughout grade school, high school, and any extracurricular activity I was part of. I was very shy, but I loved being on stage. I loved leading things because I think that social, I think that social interaction of like, I 
know what my role is. I'm talking and you listen. I, I understand that and I don't have to wait for the back and forth of conversation. And so I really like being in a leadership role because I understand what's expected of me. You might not go out much or you might prefer to only go out with your partner. That's me. I fought that for a long time. And now I just say no to a lot of social events. I try to limit my social events to one outing per week. It's hard to do that, especially when you have kids. Because then you have to start friending your kids' moms, and that's really hard. Um, you might get fired up when talking about your passions or special interests, like me making this YouTube channel about autism just because I love talking about it. You might prefer to spend time with animals. I have two cats, and they're like my favorite. I lay in bed all morning just petting my cat and like singing to him. Those are my kids in the background. Like singing to him and petting him and calling him all the names. You might not do as many girly things as your friends and you might not have as many girlfriends as other girls that you know. So that was kind of me. I had like a close-knit circle of friends. I still do and I love them but they're not like super girly girls and we don't really do girly girl things. You might shut down in social situations when you get overloaded but you might be way better at masking it than males who have autism and that's one of the other reasons why we aren't diagnosed near as frequently as males because we can be social and we can pretend like we're really good at it and it becomes a skill that we learn and we can almost like employ that skill as a performance but then after we do we're completely exhausted and we need recovery time you might have trouble maintaining close friendships. That can happen sometimes because you don't really understand the give and take of relationships in terms of like you need way more downtime than the other person does. You want to stay home. You don't want to be as adventurous or, uh, or explore. And then you may choose to remain celibate or alone. But if you are in a relationship, you might take it very, very seriously. And then due to sensory issues, you might thoroughly enjoy sex or strongly dislike it. Because again, we talked about all the sensory stuff and you just take in so much in terms of what you see and hear and feel and experience. And so that can either be really calming or it can be really upsetting. And then lastly, you can be super awkward whenever you're trying to flirt because your facial expressions don't really match and you don't really understand the give and take. You don't really understand like physical proximity and when to touch someone and when to back away. So it can be kind of interesting because it doesn't look like neurotypical flirting at all. So like I said, I found this chart when I was in the diagnostic process and it really opened my eyes. I called my best friend immediately and I was like, do you relate to this? Do you relate to this? Do you relate to this? And she'd be like, yes, no, 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 yes. No, no. And I was like, I relate to all of them. I hope that this is helpful to you. Again, I didn't create this chart. I, I redesigned it. I will try to post a link to this in my in the description and make it accessible on like another website. And if you want more information about that, I'll post the book that I think it came from. I've been trying to do my research and like attribute this to the right person. Let me hear from you in the comments. Which of these traits do you find yourself really relating to? I'm curious to hear. So Hope everybody has a great day. Remember, being unique is awesome. Being autistic is a superpower, even though some days it might not feel like that. And I'm here to help you with any questions that you might have. And hopefully we can kind of learn about each other in the comments and learn how to navigate this often really confusing world of autism.